I suffered immensely when I first started, you know, just like everyone that goes through it. There was no difference. And, and I made my opportunities um, and took advantage of them when they were there. But it took a long time. I've been doing this for 20 years. And people can sit there and wonder, why am I not? Dude, that dude, I could, I could shoot so much better than, you know. And sometimes it's not so much better that's being it. It's not just about what the picture is. There's so much more to it. And, and that's the thing that I think people, when they get into it and really experience it, they're like, oh, well, okay, now I see. Because nothing's easy. Whether it seems easy or not, there's still nothing easy about it. Brian Bowen Smith is a legendary photographer known for his celebrity portraits. He shot key art for movies, television, magazines, and everything in between. If you take a couple steps right outside my apartment here in Los Angeles, you'll see three billboards in the city with his work on it. His portfolio is prolific. He's worked with everyone from Miley Cyrus to Martin Scorsese, Kevin Hart, Nicki Minaj, and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. We talk about Brian's past and his humble upbringing, how starting out with nothing gave him an outlook and a perspective on life that still carries through to this day. He also uncovers how one becomes a celebrity photographer to begin with and the 10-year struggle he had to break into the industry. This episode of The Ground Up Show is brought to you advertisement-free. If you want to help and contribute to the show, you can head over to iTunes and leave a quick rating. Ratings help to promote the show, they help to get the word out, and they make me feel all warm and fuzzy on the inside. So if you could do that, it would be a huge help. It would mean a lot to me. And now, this is Brian Bowen-Smith. You're listening to The Ground Up Show, a podcast that inspires creatives to make meaningful content and pursue their passions. My name is Matt Diavella, and I'm a filmmaker best known for the Netflix documentary Minimalism. And I'm sitting down with creators to talk about their process, the lessons they've learned, and how to make an impact. Brian, thanks for coming on the show. You're welcome. Appreciate you being here. Um, it's funny, like I, I just was starting to do some research into your work and, and look at everything that you've done. And the more and more I look into it, the more I realize like everywhere I go, I see it <laughs> like on billboards <laughs> and like, especially like the movies lately. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, no, it's it's great. But um, uh, yeah, I really want to obviously go back and delve into how you got started. And uh, a lot of this podcast is directed towards people who are just getting started out and like, how the hell do I even begin? But I'd love to hear a little bit about what your work is focused on right now and, and the different things that you've been up to. What I'm doing right now, well, I am concentrating my personal work on a new show that I'm developing. Um, so all my spare time gets dedicated to still researching, um, finding materials, finding um, subjects, and kind of planning everything out. That's kind of the hardest part about my personal work is just figuring out what I'm going to do and how to implement it and how to get everything to happen on the day that it needed to happen. So I've been doing that a lot and still, you know, writing down ideas and, and, and uh, you know, extending on how to make them into what I want them to be. I'm trying to do something a little different. So... And that. with these personal projects, it's like, they're all self deadlines, I imagine. It's like, yeah. I want to, but obviously you have to set some kind of deadline in order right. to get it going. Um, you actually don't. Um, I mean, I, if you set a deadline, I think that you're going to force yourself to, to meet that deadline. And if you're not ready, you're not ready. Mm -hmm. Like I was planning on doing this show last October and I just, you know, I called the gallery and said, there's no way because you don't want your personal work to um, suffer in any way. You know what I mean? In time, if, if it's not there, it's not there. Mm -hmm. And it's not like, you know, you can whip out, you can whip out a bunch of nude pictures of anyone and have a show and, you know what I mean? But, you know, this one is kind of a little bit different, special and more in depth than, than my last ones. And the last ones weren't easy either. E easy either. I mean, one of the pictures was the Wild Horses, which was, Eight, eight girls so to get eight girls all in the same place all the same time with weather weather you know comp you know um cooperating and and just it was a it took about two years wow it that's seems just like a schedule everything it's and just to get everything and everyone's there oh then three girls canceled mm -hmm. well now we can't do it 
And it's not like, you know, I just can't use any girl. It was a certain kind of girl and a nice mixture of races. And mm -hmm. so it was really important that the right girls did it. And I wanted them to all be similar in size and shape. You know what I mean? So, yeah. it, so it looked like a herd of horses. So it's like things like that that, you know, sometimes they happen real fast and sometimes they take time. Right. With a, a client project, say if it's, there's a movie coming up, there's so many other factors coming in that you, you got to get the shot. You got to make it happen no matter what. Uh, with the personal stuff, um, you it's not that it's not a different standard, though, is it? It's, it's that uh no, I, I mean, it's the vision, I guess it's, it's, you know, I'm not going to try to sit here and act like I'm some genius that's, oh, it's the, you know, it's, it, it listen, it's you, most of these pictures, you know, are pretty lucky. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Especially, you know, working for clients and stuff. There's seven, eight different people pulling you in different directions to get what they want. And, and everyone's vision has got to come together as one. So I, I just, my job is to try to make all of them fit like a puzzle in, in the, the end product comes out really well. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You know, it depends. It's not in my control 100%. So the personal stuff it is. Mm. So I can be a perfectionist. I can say this, this isn't working, kill this, do it again. You're continually learning and, and making it work. And then when you see it and you're like, wow, I love this, then that, that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. People might not get it. People might love it. People might hate it. It's, but it doesn't matter at that point. It's, this is what I want you to see. Was the art stuff when you first got started out? Was that kind of where you wanted to go with it, or is that something that it just as you evolved? You know, as... it's it was the easiest thing to do because I didn't have any jobs. So all everything that I did, I was just out creating and trying to do things. And I've always been a fan of you know photography books and 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 fine art. So I'm like, wow, one day wouldn't it be amazing if I could do this? So I did a lot of that. Once you start working, unfortunately, although that gets put on the shelf and you've got to make a living. So if you don't support yourself, you can't really do this fine art stuff. And, and for most people, it's not profitable. It's, it's self-fulfilling and just, you know, accomplishments in my life that I set goals and I want to achieve them. If I set a goal, I have to achieve it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And they're, you know, just like when I started, you know, I, if I had a, dollar for everyone who told me it was too late and this this industry is too saturated and you're not going to be able to make it i'm like why how could you say that to someone it, it pissed me off really bad and i'm like i know i never not you know looked at myself as a photographer once i wanted to do this i'm like no this is what i'm going to do and i am going to do it you mm -hmm. know what i mean i think that's the difference you know between a lot of these people that grab a camera nowadays that's digital and they just go and they're like, oh, look at these great photos I've done. And they think that they're on their way to just taking over the industry. And that's great ambition. You know what I mean? But you got to take a break and look at and really understand what this is. And, and it's a business mm -hmm. up foremost. So they don't understand that. And then they like, okay, you got a great picture in natural light when the opportunity was there. Those are moments that are great. And for fine art people and for people who just want to have this as a hobby, there's nothing better than that. But you really do have to know what you're doing if you want to work and be at the level of some of the top photographers in, in the industry. And there's nothing wrong with it, but you, you got to do your homework and you got to suffer. I mean, I suffered immensely when I first started, you know, just like everyone that goes through it. There was no difference. And, and I made my opportunities um, and took advantage of them when they were there. But it took a long time. I've been doing this for 20 years. So, and people, you know, when you're, when you're at the level where I am, and not to sound arrogant, but people don't realize that I went through all that stuff. And, and even if they can do what I do, which is the most common thing, like I could do that with my eyes closed. So can I, but I'm the one that got the job. And that's the difference. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And people can sit there and wonder, why am I not Dude, that dude, I could I could shoot so much better than, you know, and sometimes it's not so much better that's being it. It's like sometimes it's on a white wall for a movie poster. It's not just about what the picture is. There's so much more to it. And and that's the thing that I think people when they get into it and really experience it, they're like, oh well. Okay, now I see. Because nothing's easy. Whether it seems easy or not, there's still nothing easy about it. And it takes, you know, would you say it gets easier? Because I, I would say from my personal experience, 
like the, the early days were the toughest. They were just like physically demanding and you weren't getting paid shit and you were just. Well, were, those still, those jobs still exist. Yeah. Listen, the industry is the industry. When it's flourishing, look what happened to music. Look, we were just talking on the way over, you know, about music videos. How much, you know, when there were million dollar videos. Now they're like, give me your A7S and have your buddy shoot it. Yeah. And where do you play them? MTV's not playing any music. You know what I mean? So if that changes and you were a video music director, photographer, what do you do? You're not going to be doing, you know, car photographers. I imagine that they've suffered immensely when they're like, oh, we'll build all this in post. We don't need to go shoot it anymore. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, the, the money is not, you know, rolling in like, you know, oh, and the fashion, give me this huge button. No, they're like, listen, this is what we got. And that's all there is. So if you want to do it, do it. If not, we'll move on. And now there are hundreds and hundreds of photographers that can do it. Do you know what I mean? So, so there is a lot more work and a lot less money for, for a lot of these jobs. Yeah. Like it, that might mean that it's also easier to get in and to start getting paid because you just grab a camera and then you have, have a couple months experience and you can start shooting. You can start taking video. You can start really producing beautiful work. Yeah. Uh, but that's not, you're not, it's I also, know, it's, it's also reputation because let's face yeah. it. If they say, listen, we have a cover of magazine, five grand all in, right? Um, and we send it to Annie and Steven and Joe and Jim Bob. If Annie takes it because she wants to work with the client, you know, the celebrity that's on the cover and she's going to do it for five grand, what are the chances Jim Bob's going to get it? You see what I'm saying? So reputation and building your, you know, image still plays a big role in that. Yeah, because it's not just quality of work and cost. It's yeah. about guarantee. They're like, yeah. hire you. You're going to, like, you've seen my work. You know that I can do it every time. You may be paying more money yes. than somebody else, but there are certain parts guaranteed. of this industry that I just will not be able to get into because of that factor. Oh, well, we know Brian's great, but we can't take a chance because this has to work. And we know this guy can deliver every time. And, and you know, and that's part of also mm -hmm. getting in and staying in. Like, you know, having that reputation of like, I deliver and I deliver every time. Your money is good with me. There's something, if it was my money, I'd want that too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then there's jobs where you can take a chance. People have taken a chance on me and I ended up getting in. Do you know what I mean? But those chances don't come up often because people love security. Do you know what I mean? Or a magazine like C Magazine who I've, I've started and done... 11 12 of their covers and help launch it once someone else took over the magazine i haven't shot a cover since they have their people they have their things mm. so you win some you lose some right i've noticed that too with client work where uh especially i work with a lot of startups and tech companies and then you get in the door you build this a relationship and you nurture over two years and you really deliver time and time again and then you know new marketing director comes in and then all of a sudden you know, they might reach out to you, but hey, they're also bringing their relationships and the video guy that they know. Yeah, like if you're going to change something and you're coming into somewhere to say, you know, I'm going to, you know, revamp the mag. Part of that is we got to revamp who's shooting it. Otherwise, isn't it the same thing? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, that, that just things that happen innately in every industry. People are, you know, heads of companies and all of a sudden, oh, yeah, we sold it and everyone's getting let go. But, you know, your boss that hired you doesn't own it anymore, so there's no say. So, you know, that's just part of life. But, you know, I think with every job, I don't care what it is, you've got to be able to pick yourself up and reinvent yourself and, and look forward, look forward and say, oh, this could probably happen. So I'm going to have start already start a backup plan. Yeah, I think people probably get a little bit too comfortable, especially when things start to work in a certain way. And like you said, with the music videos, you think it's going to last forever. No, it's it's like a relationship. You know what I mean? You can be married, happily married. You think, oh, I'm good. Do you know what I mean? Mm, you're not. You've always got to respect your wife, treat her and remind her. Because if you start ignoring the things that got you in that relationship, your relationship starts to suffer. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and work is the same way. I mean, my... I have a relationship with photography. I look at it like that. I treat it like that. And I think that anyone who gets too comfortable in their skin, their work is going to suffer. 
they get too cool for school. Like, oh, I got this. Like, you know what I mean? You start, oh, if the mo- big job, money jobs aren't there, and the little ones, I don't need to try this. Let's just get this over with and you know, get on to the important things. It's like now those little ones are so important and don't forget them. Because it'll come back and bite you in your ass. 100%. And you never know these little jobs. You never know, like you shoot this girl, and you don't know, you know, whatever. It's two hundred bucks. I'm going out of pocket, you know. Then two days later, she's the lead of Star Wars, and you know she did not have a good experience with you, and she hated the pictures. You'll never work with her on the big jobs. She'll just see your name and go, "No, ugh, that guy's terrible." Mm. You know what I mean? And you might not be. Mm-hmm. But you you didn't show her the respect that she deserved on the little job, so you you miss all the big jobs. And that's that's why you have to put everything that you have into and and really have respect for the 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 work that you're putting into it. Like yeah. whether you're doing weddings or bar mitzvahs, put everything you have into it um, because it's it's not only for just that one outcome or maybe they'll hit, come back down the road. It's that you're actually crafting your skill and you're getting better and you're learning how to work with clients. There's so many different things that if you just write it off and say, oh, uh, you know, this is... Yeah. I look at it like this. I look at every opportunity. It's such a great one. I'm like if there's a little magazine that, you know, and they're like, oh, you know, we'd love for you to do it, but there's no way you do it. I'm like, I'll totally do it. And I love to go and do all, like the... I mean, like I try my hardest to make this like to blow people away. So everyone that's like, wait, oh, that's cool. This magazine looks great this this month. Who did that? And then they see your name. And then hopefully they're like, oh, yeah, no wonder. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like that's the little, it, you know, times you can take advantage and really shine. You know what I mean? It's like, I, I love, give me a small pond any day. It's like investing in a way too, right? Completely. Like, Everything if, you do is an investment. That's yeah. a great way to put it. Every single thing you do. Even even the what you Instagram, everything's an investment. And and look at if you either care about what you do or you don't. And when you really care about what you do, you would never do anything that you weren't a hundred percent, you know, happy to do. And and and, and put even when you're not happy, put a hundred percent of the effort to make it good. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I mean, there's concepts where I'm like, ugh, really, this purple backdrop because I'm I just I'm not into it. But I find ways to make it work. When I get hired for work, I'm a tool. It's not like go do what you want. Like we want your image and your. No, it's like here's what we need to do, and this is the color pattern, and this is what we got to do. And sometimes even the celebrities are like, ugh, I hate this, you know. And I'm like, well, let's figure out how to make it where you don't hate it, and we have to do it good, you know. And just like them, like they're doing it, you know, they're in it for a reason too, so they've got to do it. So let's just, you know, it's a job. Mm-hmm. Then there's things where it's like, oh, you have full range. Do whatever you want. Amazing. Yeah. But those aren't every day. Yeah. Um, when do you know when you can push back a little bit? Like even if you're like, ah, I don't know just, about this purple. It's, you yeah. Know, do you, I, do you I, like I voice, voice my opinion. Yeah. Okay. I definitely voice my opinion. And a lot of times I lose. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. I know. I know that from firsthand experience as well. But like, obviously you have to put it out there. Like, let them know, hey, I don't know if this is going to work. But then, like, they're the ones paying for it. They're your client. Well, if they, they want you, you know, to do I this. listen to their reasoning, and I was like, there's a reason for it. Yeah. You know, it's because this thing that we're doing, the purple is the color, and, and, you know, our viewers, and we did research, and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay. Yeah, obviously, you know, I can pass. Yeah. If I'm like, no, this is terrible. I, I, I don't want me or whoever I'm shooting to, to go through this. Then I just say, listen, I'm, with all respect, I'll pass. That's and there, fine. is there a line also with like, like you were talking about your reputation? If you're like, if this is no, really no, no, not- because it, it's you. You're not saying, oh, you just said, listen, it's just not me, yeah. and I, I don't want to do a disservice to you. So I really think that there's someone out there better, you know, for you. So I, I'm, I'm not passing so much for me as, as much as for you. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and- but I, it, and that doesn't happen often. Very, very rarely. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's because most of the time it's like, I can make this look cool. Yeah. Or just like, I just, let's, let's not do it with this thing. Let's do it this way. And I'll come up with ideas and, you know, oh, that's fine. They all would love that. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Or I'll even show them at the shoot. Like, look, look, look at this. Same purple, but we did it this way instead. And oh, cool. Yeah. And even if it's rare, saying no and declining work is definitely a luxury that 
really can only be achieved once you've been in the game for a while, once you've been working for a long time. Because I feel like in the very beginning, you just have to say yes to yeah. everything. Again, like a relationship. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if she wants to do something, <laughs> sure. I'd lo- I love yeah. the zoo. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh, it's depressing. The animals are caged. I'm like, why is she going to the zoo? But you go to the zoo and you eat cotton candy, whatever the hell she wants, and you make her happy. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's sacrifices you that you deal with. So, you know, that, that happens. But, yeah, you definitely can turn down things when you're at a certain level. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. When did you first start getting into photography? Probably on 20 years ago. I mean, I did it in high school. It was the only class I ever got an A in. Um, but then I was, you know, I was a gymnast and I was an athlete, so I never had time really. And I couldn't afford a camera. If it wasn't the school's camera, I was, there was no way it's happening. Mm-hmm. So I kind of put it on the shelf, but I did have a super love for it. And my teacher was like, wow, you're, you're really good at this. You know what I mean? It was the first time in my life that someone kind of in school related was like, wow, you're good at this. And I was like, really? I had no idea. You know, I just did what I, you know, learned and kind of you know did the projects you know what i mean but um i had a love for it um it, it, when i hold a camera and i have a camera and it, even today it's like it, it's so cool to me and that they're all very personal you know what i mean and uh that infatuation of that and knowing that you're just doing something that's like you know you're capturing it you you feel i always felt like i was doing something important even if it's just getting a good picture of someone. And, and when I did get a picture of someone and gave it to them, this and that, and they were like so excited, that thrill of just pleasing someone was addictive as hell. You know what I mean? And I still have that today. Like, um, you know, I have to, that's, I, I crave that. It's my drug. Like I need more. You can never get enough of that. Like, let me overdose on it. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? like, it could be tough, though, too, because then it's a you, tra- you, you, put a lot you of get stress, that email yeah. with all the exclamation points, and that's mm-hmm. what you live on. You're like, oh, shit. Like, I killed it on that one. You almost want to print it and put it up on the yeah. on your wall. Or the other way where they don't respond for a couple of days, oh, and you're, you're like, like <laughs> what the hell? You know, like, in my agent, I drive him crazy. Like, did you hear back? Yeah. You gave it to him yesterday. I know, but they have to have seen it by now. Yeah. It's like, just, would you relax? Yeah, it's like I definitely killed that. Like yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I killed that. Yeah, like I, I, yeah. I think I did okay on that yeah. one. You uh, go back and forth, and you get, and they're like, you know what? I don't care. I'm happy with it. <laughs> yeah, this is that's so. And true. when you see the bubbles coming up, you're like, oh, they saw it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And so later in life, when I, you know, I was out here and just I picked up a camera and I was making little videos and I needed um, little skate videos and I needed someone to shoot the cover. And they were like 500, 600 bucks. I'm like, dude, I can't afford that. Like, you just do it for me? And they're like, no. So I got mad. I was like, well, screw that. I'll just, I'll learn how to use a camera and shoot it myself. I'm going to be there shooting all the content. Mm-hmm. And then when I started doing it, I'm like, I found myself like, wow, this is way more fun. This is way more simple. I can concentrate on what I'm doing because it's just me and a camera and, and keeping it simple. It's really just about getting a great shot not really worried about technical, you know, video and all that, well, you know. It's like, you still have to know a lot. There's a lot of knowledge, frame rates and sound. And totally different world. It's, it's, it's a completely different world. And the stress of just, you know, even when you know it, it's it never perfect or goes wrong or, oh, did I get, you know what I mean? Photos, it's like, psh, psh, and you know, back in the day, you film, like, you're like, oh, I got that one. You'd have to wait, you know, a week to see it. Mm-hmm. but you're like, oh, which was kind of cool in a way. Yeah, and even like the backing up process, like I, I did weddings for quite a while when I started out, and it's, you just have a backup photographer just in case, because like oh, yeah. now with the digital stuff, car can oh, get yeah. corrupt, whatever, but uh, with video, it's a little bit more challenging to ensure yeah. that, and and also just like the size of the, the video is it's just, just harder. crazy. Yeah, period, and I'm like, I like keeping things simple. You know what I mean? I mean, once once I've studied books and taught myself how to use a camera, everything else kind of started coming into place. I could just concentrate on what I'm doing. You know what I mean? And and really just try to get creative and make moments and and and, and just do it. Mm-hmm. When was it that it, it started to turn into a profession where you could actually make money from it? And- Probably 10 years after that. Wow, so it was 10 years from when you first started. Yeah. What were you doing like in between then? Was there, did you have other jobs and? You know, living off my wife. 
um, doing odd jobs, just anything that would make it work. Mm-hmm. And we, right around the ninth year mark, we were, we were pretty broke. Like it was to the point where I had to look at her and go, "Ugh, this is not good." You know what I mean? I promised her this good life, and we got married, and we're expecting our our first kid, and I'm like, "Man." What you know, I had that. What am I gonna do? Give this up, you know? And I told you, know, like, I'm gonna get a job at a restaurant, like, I'll do it. And she's like, Don't you dare! She's like, If you give up now, I will never forgive you. And I just thought, Man, that's just like so cool that I have someone that I thought was just must in her mind be going, Well, wow, what is this guy doing? You know, because I would get jobs here and there, you know what I mean? Like, every once in a while, we get a job. Oh gosh, that was great, you know, but not steady enough to where it's like we're making, you know, I'm supporting you. Um, and then, you know, after we had that conversation, and I finally got a really great agent, and um, things just started, you know, stacking up one after another. And at first, it was like we made enough money this month to cover our mortgage, plus, you know, I can take you to dinner. To oh yeah, we got three months mortgage in the bank so we can, you know, relax for a little bit, you know, and to eventually, you know, you work your way up to where, you know, you have stability Mm -hmm. and you can say, now I'm a working photographer. Mm -hmm. You need that support though from Mm -hmm. the beginning. You do. Even if you're single. Yeah. You need reinforcement. You need to know that, you know, you're not the only one that believes in you, you know, because you need other people to believe in you to, to actually start working mm-hmm. if you want to be, you know, in the business part of it. You really do. Yeah, the business part of it too is it's definitely, like you said, really challenging to get going. Yep. And that uh, it's pretty dicey early. And some people get lucky and they, they start getting really great paid gigs like right out the gate. Um, but like for me personally, I graduated with a hundred thousand dollars in debt and then I'm like, yeah, they oh, set you shit, up for man. You're college. in the hole. Yeah. I, and then, so then I'm living at home with my parents for a couple of years and I'm just scrape, scraping by and it's like one or two projects, one client leads to another and then eventually it builds up, but you have to be willing to go through some shit to get through. Yeah, you do. And I think that that's the whole thing is that, you know, you, you can weed out a lot of the people by watching it not happen. You know what I mean? Or, you know, everyone thinks they're so good, but you're not. <laughs> they're like, I, I'll even admit myself. I'm like, there are so many people that are better photographers than me. Absolutely. And I, that I envy and look, you know, up to. And, I, and some of them aren't working. You know what I mean? But, you know, it's like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, you got to figure out, you got to figure out what, what is broken in this recipe it's got to be the business side because of course i, I felt the same way when i was i would there was these people that i idolized that were around my age and they were doing the same type of film work and i would literally emulate their work and i would try to copy it and I'd be like wow this is really good uh, and for whatever reason i was able to actually turn it into a business where others are now working like a nine to five corporate job that they're not fulfilled yeah. in um it's like where is that gap and like what did you learn about like the the business side of my it? personality in in I think people can see when I work with them. They see that I love this. You know what I mean? And I get along with people. I'm in a a business that is, you know, revolves around people and being around people. And and I think when you really do love it, and I don't I don't seek fame, I don't seek, you know, I like I said, I'm an adrenaline junkie when it comes to like when someone says, God, that's a gr- I love that photo you took of me. Oh, can I I can print it in my house. Like to me there's that's all I need. I don't need to be like recognized or, you know, someone's, oh, you know, like, you know, you're, you're a big name now. I'm like, I'm not, not really. You know what I mean? Like I, I've gained some sort of notoriety, but I don't, that's not really why I do it. Where some people, I, I see that they want that. They mm-hmm. want to be respected. They want to, they want people to know their name. Like I'm just as much as a celebrity as who I'm shooting. Do you know what I mean? And I just don't care for that. I really, honestly, I don't. Everything that I do is is for myself and, you know, just to help move forward and see how far I can grow. It's going to come with it either way. Like, sometimes it's weird. I'll go somewhere. And, oh, my God. I know. And I'm, like, shocked. Like, how do you know who I am? You know, like, oh, are you kidding me? And Instagram has been a, you know, crucial role in that as well because, 
and I Instagram like I'll Instagram my fat dog and <laughs> yeah, I was looking at it. It's like stupid it, stuff. Like it's I, very it's personal. Not, I, 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 that's what Instagram is for for me. It's like yeah. you, you want to know me. I don't. I could put up all my work and and make myself look like you know the best photographer. You know, it's just. But it's like it's not interesting to me. Like you see it already. You see the billboard. You know. Sometimes I, it's fun to put up work stuff mixed with what I do in life. And I think for me, it's like my life. And, and what I get to do now and the people I surround myself by, that's the interesting part about my life. And the fact that I'm just, for once in my life, I'm happy. You know what I mean? And I'm happy that I'm doing what I'm doing. And I want people to know and, and look at that and go, man, this guy's just like me. You know, I want people to know that you can make it if you want to. And there is a way to get into this industry or in any industry. Like you said, wedding photographers. Are, I, have a, I have a friend that, was like, man, I can't, you know, get into it, you know, and he started shooting hotels when he went on vacation. Now he's shooting like major, you know, for companies and they're flying around the world to shooting hotels. And man, it's like, wow, how cool is it? You found that niche on an accident and he's killing it now. Mm -hmm. So it's, you never know. I could see that though with the Instagram and, and like to each their own. Uh, there are some amazing Instagram photographer accounts that like every single image is just gorgeous. And when you even look at it, like in the full stack scrolling down, it's just, it's just it's like beautiful. A, a great it's consistent. Pinterest, it's, and it's a big, a great Pinterest page. Yeah. But, but that's like, what, to me, that's what Pinterest is for. And you know what? I, I still enjoy those and I get yeah. why people do that too. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, I've had people tell me like, you should do a separate account with just your work. So it's not mixed up, you know? And I'm like, mm. I have it's an agent for that. Go to my website. Yeah. Like, uh, wh why? Yeah. And I'm like, you know, it's either if you don't, this is the thing. Do, you don't have to follow. You don't have to like it because it's my page. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, but that's a whole, you know, like anything that's, you know, it's part of the business, you know, doing work, you know, your agent has something different to say about what you think. You know what I mean? Like, oh, don't put this in my portfolio. Oh, but that's my favorite picture. Yeah, but this is what we're doing. You know, so I have to trust them and let go of things that I, you know, creatively think, oh, that. so it's, you know, there's a lot of things. It's a collaboration. Yeah, the first time I went to an agent and they looked at my book, I had probably 50, 60 pictures in it. And by the time I left that meeting, I had two. Wow. I'm like, well, if you want to come with us, you need to go do more stuff like this. These are the only two things in your book that I can get you work from. And I'm looking at her like, are you crazy like you just took three four years of what i've tried to create and and you know i was bitter for a day or two but then i realized man she's right and you know what else um, who am i to tell someone who's got all these successful photographers that she's representing i'm like maybe i should listen so i'm and, and it took me four years to get an agent and i had to go back to her every year kim gillis she owned an, an agency called montage and she had some great people and I'm like, man, I gotta be with her. So I walked in off the street and was like, hey. She's like, can I help you? <laughs> you know, like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm a photographer. And so I, um, you know, she's like, great. You know, make an appointment. You know, but she was like, you just came in off the street? And I was like, yeah, I, I was, you know, walking by and I saw, you know, you were an agent and I thought, man, I'd come up. <laughs> and she's like, wow. So she's like, all right, well, why don't you make a meeting and we'll see your stuff? And then, you know, she took out, these are the two. And so every year I went back with more pictures like that. And every year she'd be like, wow, okay, keep going. And I'm like, keep going? Like another, mm -hmm. what, another year? But, but she was right. And then, you know, well, f I think it was three or four years later, you know, I went back in and I was like, this is when I was, you know, in, the, in that, you know, ninth year. Just, ugh. And then, the turnaround point was I went to a meeting and she finally said, you know, all right, um, well, we've got rid of a lot of photographers and we're making it, you know, a little smaller and more boutique. And I was like, great. Sitting there just thinking to myself, this is a waste of time again. Like, here's this, you know, she's going to say now that, you know, they're downsizing and they got, you know, she's like, but if you'd like to come aboard, we'd, we'd like to develop you. And I'm looking at it. I still did. It didn't register because I was ADDing and thinking about not one more depressing interview or, or comment or meeting. I can't take it anymore. Hmm. I was almost at my breaking point and she's like, looking at me like shocked that I wasn't surprised. And I looked at her, I'm like, what do you mean? Like, am I in or am I out? You know what I mean? She's like, 
well, you tell me. Like, and I was like, I literally started crying. I was like, I can't believe this. And went home, my wife and I were just like, no way. Because I knew that that would be the changing point. Having someone as powerful as her backing you, you're going to get in front of the people that you need to be in front of. And then it was up to me. Yeah, that's amazing uh, that you were that persistent and also patient to, yeah. to keep coming back every you know every year, however often it was for four years. And she never would. She told me she never would have done it had I not been. She just knew. She goes, people are going to like this guy. People are going to get him. His work's just not at the level right now for me to help him. But after I worked hard and I, you know, I did, I repeated the picture she said, I started begging celebrities to let me do spec shoots. You know what I mean? Oh, if I'll do a headshot for free if you just let me do this picture, you know, and slowly they did it. And, you know, and I, you know, I did my part and then she did her part and that's what started my career. I, I suspect that you also didn't huff and puff when she said no at first. You know, I think a lot of times people can just no. get so upset. Crushing. Yeah. But didn't I, I understood her. She was right. Yeah. And and even when I thought she was wrong, I listened to her. And I'm like, you know, and that's part of this business. You gotta listen to people. You've gotta let your ego and your artistic ability out the window sometimes and just do what they need to do. And do it good and right so that client's happy. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Music people, you know, we're shooting a thing and they're like, they give me a concept and I'm like, okay. No, I'm like, let's make, you know, let's figure out how to make this amazing. So your album cover is so dope to you and all your viewers. You know what I mean? Whether it's something I'd even put in my portfolio, I, you know, I don't know. But I want, you know, I want this to be cool. So, so you can congratulate, but, but there's nothing, you know, then it's like, wow. I never thought I'd be doing a rainbow theme with, you know, but look how cool this looks. Yeah, those collaborations, uh, how did they... How do they unfold? And, you know, say an artist comes to you where, you know, you have a lot of creative freedom, but it's just the, the two of you or their team. And you they'll, they'll have, you know, the label, um, the talent, art directors, set designers. We all have meetings, you know, and conversations. And, and it's mainly the artist getting across her vision of what you like. Miley Cyrus, she called me and said, hey, let's go on the beach and just shoot some pictures. I had no idea what I was getting into. So I just grabbed my camera, grabbed one light, and went to the beach with her by ourselves. And we did these, um, like, probably the best stuff I've done of her. Just us, okay, dude, look at this. Let me do this. And it was like playing. And I got home and I was like, wow. That was, like, unbelievable. And it was just her running around and me, you know, just her giving me the idea and then me just lighting it cool and, and, and trying to make it look nice. You know, and so the two of us just went and did it. And it turned out to be, you know, stunning stuff. It goes back to what you were saying in the beginning is that sometimes there's so many things that you, you can't predict and you don't know what the weather's going to be like that day. It could end up coming out shitty. Yeah. <laughs> but you went out and then it just... Yeah. It, and it, and we went pieces. to the beach and it was overcast. Yeah. Which absolutely played in the photos. In, in the mood of them. And, 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 and you know what I mean? It wasn't a typical beach day, which was such a blessing. But I didn't know it till we shot the first frame. So yeah, it's, it's literally, you gotta, you've always got to be open to the universe letting itself into your photo. Mm -hmm. I, I, I listen, I listen to everyone. I'm not, I'm not shy about someone creating an idea and me implementing it. And then in, you know, and it's like the, the weird thing is that sometimes I'll get so much credit, you know, even the Jumanji stuff. It's like, I took the photos, but those art directors and, and, and Sony are the ones that made those things look so damn cool. So it's like I get a lot of credit even when it's not due, which is, you know, part of being a photographer, being in this business, which is, man, isn't that a great thing? Take my work and make it look really great. You know what I mean? A lot of times it, it's like, wow. You know, and you're like, wow, that's so sick. Kudos, guys. Then you get all the credit because everyone's like, oh, yeah, he shot that. Oh, man, that stuff was great. But I'm like... It, yeah, a lot of people. It took a village. Well, it's crazy when you work on these big shoots, and I've only done a few of them, mostly in the indie world, where I can take credit for most of what I do, where I'm like, it was just me and a camera running around the country filming. Um, but then I've done some of these big shoots where I'm like, I literally hit record, and yeah. that's all I did. And everybody out, and the, yeah, there was some collaboration there. As long as you're in the room. Yeah. You're the one that got to hit record. 
that again remember that's an important part because like you said anyone might have been able to do that but it is you do you know what i mean so i think being there and being present and just being able to get the job is probably 50 percent of the business well there's a reason why you're there that's right whether you know it or not mm -hmm. or whether someone else knows it or not you know what i mean because you only need to be in one little tiny shoot for someone to notice you and say hey you know publics can say that was great i have six other clients you know we got to get you doing some stuff would you be willing to blah 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 yes i'd love to and that can just catapult you or one magazine might love your stuff and you're cheap and you're working for them and then you know you're doing it and you build your clientele it's all about relationships and repeat business you know what i mean you know i'll do this job and take 200 bucks you know to get to work with nicole kidman so you know you just gotta you know you gotta be smart like in any business you gotta you gotta know when when to say yes when to say no what is the right choice what is the wrong choice when to recover from a wrong choice and make you know, mistakes and make mistakes. figure it out there's always going to be mistakes nothing's yeah. perfect you know what i mean and you, and you got to be you got to have really tough skin at the end of the day that's what you really need and you just got to be cool and, and and be able to to go with the flow and and, and you know just go down the river with them you know what i mean don't try to swim upstream it's <laughs> you're never going to get anywhere you, you can try and I'm the one that's going to do it. I'm going to swim all the way up that stream. And you're like, you end up so much farther down in the boat that you should have been just chilling and fishing. How do you get into celebrity photography? Because it's, it's obviously specific and it's definitely a conscious choice. To I was say. hanging out with some friends that, you know, and I was, I was doing a, you know, a documentary with his band 311 and, and I met Incubus through them on this big melee tour. And, then I started shooting for Incubus and going on tour with them and filming and shooting. And um, Selma Blair showed up because she was dating Jason Schwartzman, who was in Phantom Planet. And I'm just like, oh, my gosh. We, we were kind of hanging out backstage because she was hanging out by herself. And now we became friends. So I'm like, hey, come over here. Let me take a picture of you. And I would just shoot a picture of her. Boom. All of a sudden you have a now picture of Selma Blair. Photographer. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then Jason was a huge actor too. So I'm like, do you think one day, you know, we could take some photos? Because, you know, we're hanging out for, you know, six months on tour. And then he came over and we did this shoot. And so now I had Selma and I had Jason. So when I had that, I had it. Now it's like Selma's publicist was like, hey, can you do this? Or, you know, now this magazine wants to shoot Selma. I love the pictures you did. Will you do it? And literally, that's how it started. And then someone would tell her friends and, and so and so. And publicists, you know, publicists are my, you know, saving grace in this industry. They're the ones that, they're the ones that control what you do and what you don't do. For the most part, they can approve you. They can push for you. They, you know, and they're just their job is to make the client that they're working with happy, and and make it smooth. And make everything you know go well if they know that you are on their side and they're doing that and protecting that person which is very important then you know they're going to use you again but it's still all it has to work you have to do good work that you know the the celebrity has to love what you did as well you know there's so many things to get through to just do a shoot you know what i mean so that's what i mean but you can't just be talented You've got to be able to network. You've got to be able to deliver. You've got to be able to be trusted. You've got to be able to, you know, get in that door and stay in that door. You know, and those things, that's what took took me a long time. Yeah, it's, I, I do love that. I, I just kind of, I guess you had a vision for it going in where you saw an opportunity. You saw, okay, if I, if I shoot these two, then now I'm starting to develop this portfolio where I can then eventually shoot more celebrities. And then it, it just, that's certainly, it leads itself to, um, I guess it as an element of legitimacy, I guess through other people's eyes, it's almost like clout, I guess. Uh, and I see that on this podcast as well. It's like the bigger guests I get. And then it's like, boom, it's like, oh, I get like a, a good rapper on the show. Boop, boop, boop. And then all of a sudden I have all these other rappers that would be willing to, because they respect him. They respect my work once they've seen it. And then kind of the dots connect. Yeah. But when you first start out, you have nobody. It's That's the hardest thing, right? Yeah, I love my, fa my favorite thing is like, People will look at my website and I'm like, man, you're amazing. You shot everyone. And I'm like, mm, did you look at all the work or did you just look at who I shot? Mm -hmm. Because I don't think they looked at the photos. They just looked and saw, here's, you know, 
so and so. Here's they're not so actually, yeah, so. they're not looking at the they're lighting looking, and the composition. Know, like, exactly. And, exactly. If you're a photographer, maybe you do. Yeah. Or you know, it's but isn't that why TMZ exists and why the internet exists when it comes to celebrity? It's interesting. And it's there's some type of validity when it comes to that. Like you must be good if all these people are letting you shoot them. Yeah. You know, maybe. It takes yeah. Maybe not. <laughs> Probably. I mean, I feel like eventually you, you you might be able to get five or you know yeah. a dozen, but then eventually yeah, your reputation got, is If gonna... you've got five shoots with Jennifer Aniston, then probably. Right. If you've got one, you got lucky. You know what I mean? So it's still even today. Like I still don't look at my career or what I'm doing today any different than still trying to get the big job, still trying to get into great magazines. Like I've been trying to shoot for Interview Magazine forever. And I did in the beginning, but then when they revamped, guess what? Now I got the boot. So how do I get back in? And I love that magazine. I love working with them. I love, you know, you know, GQ, which I think I'm perfect for, but obviously I'm not. But I still try to figure out how in the hell can I get in there? I got it. You know what I mean? So it's no, no different struggle than anyone trying to get all this work and, and get into the same magazines. You know what I mean? There's a lot of, there's some beginning photographers that are following me that I see they are shooting for interview. And it, you know, whoever's art directing and doing that issue, they see something in them that it's, it's, it's a certain thing. So you got to wait, be patient and just keep trying. You know what I mean? It's not like I should be able to shoot for interview, dude, I'm BBS. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't work that way. It would get boring if you could just do everything you wanted to do, work with everyone you wanted to work with Maybe on the flip of a dime. <laughs> <laughs> well, like there's an excitement to reaching out to somebody, not knowing there's a, there's they're a certain amount of yes. self fulfillment when you have to work for it. Yeah, do you know what I mean? If it, if things came easy, you're right. It would, you know. But the thing in photography is that each jo- you get the job and you it, it becomes so much different while you're doing it. So it's not. It, 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 even if it comes easy, you're still so into it and stoked if you're smart. But there is, listen, there is a, uh, when I get the call that I booked a big job, like a movie poster or something like that, it, I am literally jumping up and down every single time. Cause that's, those don't come around every day. Do you know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and those are the ones that are on billboards. And you know, when I drive down the street and I look at them and I'm just like, you know, like last month, I saw one on one side, one on the other. And I literally took a picture in front of it like, this is what I want to show my grandkids. Yeah. Do you look what grandpa did? Do you know what I mean? Because that's rare. Super rare. You're, you know, my, my agent texts me something really sweet that I'll never forget is like, dude, you have three billboards in town right now. Most people aspire in their life to do one. You've got three up at the same time. You're a boss. Thank you so much. And I'm like, man, that's incredible. And I never, I don't even know if I would have known that. Do you know what I mean? Because, mm-hmm. you know, you don't know when these things are going up. Once the movie, you shoot it, the movie poster's in control of it. Sometimes I, if they don't post it or this, do something, I might not know it's out yet. Do you know what I mean? Because it's, you know, controlled by the, the um, people who are doing it. You know, so it was really cool to, to see that and... You know, and it's, it never gets old and it doesn't make me any like, oh, I've cool. Now I did that. It, I want to keep doing that for the rest of my career. I love the gratitude of it too, where you just kind of take a moment and you pause. Yeah. I could have stayed, I could have pulled out a lawn chair and just watched it. <laughs> Everyone that walked by like, yeah, see those? I did those. <laughs> sure you did, buddy. I did that. Just giving me change. Yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm serious. I did. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's all good. And I love. You know, that's why I want to do this podcast and why I want to, you know, I go speak, you know, if someone wants me to speak or give people encouragement or help someone that's struggling and let them know that we all have the same problems and assure them that don't worry, that struggle never goes away. <laughs> so yeah. get used to it. Enjoy it. it. You know, but I am forever grateful for the life that I have and, you know, and I sit back at, at, at everything that I have, even my son to... And, and I owe it all to photography. So it's, it's really, really gratifying. And to be able to be, you know, one of the ones that, you know, gets supported by it. And I make a living doing photography. It's, it seems silly. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes I can't believe it. Like we were shooting Julianne Huff yesterday and we were having so much fun. And, 
guy turns around and he goes, dude, you're getting paid for this. And he whispered it like, <laughs> I'm like, I know. Yeah. Isn't it stupid? You know, but I was it's that's the thing is that we literally were having fun and it's infectious so julianne was having fun and you know and we're like just it went so smooth and we're like oh my gosh we're done you know so fast because you know time flies when you're having fun yeah i think you have to keep reminding yourself that too like the fact that you're like i can't believe i get paid for this like in the beginning it, it was easy that came naturally because i was like i literally can't believe somebody's paying me for this and then you build some confidence and you in your own skills yeah i think that when you're broke and you're struggling i knew every dime i knew how much exactly how much money i owed each month and i knew exactly how much money that was coming in and after tax it was like i was a stockbroker you know what i mean but you know now i couldn't tell you what i make I, it's not I know that I'm safe. You know what I mean? And thank God my wife handles all everything else and runs the office and does all the billing. And you know what I mean? We're able to keep that in the family. And she became, you know, you know, a crucial part of what I do. And you know, it's a full-time job for her that, and she raises my kid. You know what I mean? So having a partner like that and not having to pay someone else is unbelievable. You know, my agents are great. And, you know, I have a financial advisor that, you know, deals with you know here's what we need to do here's how much you know i get an allowance each week and that's all i get and it's not big you know what i mean so what it forces me to do is just remember like this is all you have if you want to be able to live your lifestyle and save money and have a future you know which is great so i have everyone else doing that side of it so i really now am able to focus on what i really need to do which is just continue what I'm doing and try to stay relevant and try to try to keep on, you know, keeping on. Was that something that came naturally to you? The, the not really worrying or caring too much about the money. Once you started to come in and it was kind of like once, yeah, every, everything becomes natural when it becomes easy. I'm not going to lie. You know what I mean? I can sit there and go, Oh no. Yeah. Having money is, is a blessing. And it's just, the stress of it. Like I remember paying off my student loans and I just remembered like how, like you said, getting out of college, it's like, I think our system is set up so awkwardly when you, you know, how can you go out and try to get a job and live and try to support yourself when you're paying these student loans off and you just don't have, you know, it's hard to make everything work. You know, we struggled my whole life as a child. My, we were on welfare. My mom was very poor and there was no, it's like the simplest things in life. Like, you know, I'm going to play with this dirt and try to build a castle out of dirt. Like, those are my toys at that point. So, and also, like, I know what it's like to struggle, like, really struggle. Like, we don't have food tonight. Sorry. There's no window. Let's try to get these hefty bags up because winter's coming. You know what I mean? And it's like, that's poor. You know what I mean? And I lived that life till I was graduated high school. So I know what it's like. So money was very important to me in the sense that we need to buy food. It was necessities. There was no luxuries involved. Do you know what I mean? So the fact that I didn't care about money other than we need to figure out how to hustle and get this money to 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 be able to buy shoes and socks and underwear. Not I need this new bike or I want this new jacket because it's dope. And you know what I mean? It was like, nah, I'll get... I don't mind getting, you know, the cheap sneaks as long as there's no holes in them. You know what I mean? So I still keep that mentality today in a sense that when I do buy something for myself, it's still like I'm budgeting it. I'm not looking at this wasting money. I don't throw it out the window and I know how important it is. And I also try to give back as much as I can. I do a lot of charity work. And I think that more than money, my... um what what I can do with a photo is far more than what I can do donating, you know, a certain amount of money, showing up and, and getting my celebrity friends involved that do have money. You know, there's a lot that you can do to um, kind of feel good about not feeling guilty that I do have money now. I can go out and buy the nice jacket now, but I still feel a sense of guilt. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but, you know, if I build a well for generosity water and raise enough money to make that happen. I think that that's my way of saying it is okay to have some money. 
Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, I can't, you know, I don't feel guilty because I have money that I've done it and I've earned because I know that I've earned it. Do you know what I mean? But there is a sense of like, I feel better about it if I can give back and use my craft to help people. Mm -hmm. It's it's hard not to feel guilty because we kind of see this stuff all over the place. And a couple of my friends, uh, they were on the podcast recently. They, uh, they have a documentary on Netflix called Living on One Dollar. So they went to Guatemala and they lived on a dollar a day for two months. And for them, it was, let's, well, they, they were like economy majors and they were like, let's just, I want to experience what that would be like because half of the world's population at the time lived with less than a dollar a day. Mm -hmm. uh, and what See, that's, I was just going to say the the real test is don't do it for a couple months. Do it for a couple of years. Yeah. Then see. I mean, this is their lives, right? Yeah. Then uh, see. And it's like, think about the guilt to come back. Because it's like, no. well, then those people that you met, the families and the friends that you made, they're still there living on less than a dollar a day. I get it. Um, there's not you don't here's the thing when you you don't want to go backwards you set your life in bars and once you reach that bar your job is to stay at that bar or move forward it's literally just to go backward I've set goals for myself I set them low and I reach them and then I go higher and then I go higher sometimes it's not in your hands if this whole industry crashes and they don't need photographers anymore right that means I don't work and that means Annie Leavewitz doesn't work that means, you know, everyone doesn't work. So what do you do? You have to keep going. And that would literally be the demise of me. So, all right, I have to figure out a new way. Well, if they're not doing photography, they're doing something that's going to be involved with it. Whether it's now we're doing it in digital or do I have to get my computer skills now even further? Do you know what I mean? So that's what I mean, thinking of the future and thinking of all those things and setting the bars. But my point is, once you get to a certain level, you don't want to go backwards because it's failure. It seems like failure, but sometimes you have to go backwards and start over. Mm. But but if you've never been there and you're always just going, going, and going, you know what I mean? It's, it's a lot harder to understand. I embrace the way I grew up. I'm over it now, it, you know what I mean? But it, the fact that I lived it, I know what it's like, it can be easy for me to start over. It's a lot harder for someone that never had to eat for a dollar a day. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, right. Mm -hmm. I would, why would I do that? You know what I mean? Like, and, and that's impossible. There's no way anyone could eat for a dollar, you know what I mean? But, but like, mm, it's possible. And you find ways. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's like, that's why it's like you get comfortable though when you're there. So it's like how do you just keep moving forward and keep moving forward and trying not to move back. I think that's the, the only recipe for life that works for me. Like you were saying, like nothing is guaranteed. So I do think that's a really great case uh, to be a little bit more conservative. Don't be like so extravagant. You know what I mean? Sure, like indulge and enjoy what you have and appreciate it and, and go out and to, to have nice dinners. Um, but really find what you value. And totally. I would say don't go over the top. <laughs> like, well, you the, don't know just because here's you the made... the funny part about it. It's like, it's like, I get, like I said, I get an allowance, you know? Yeah. So every Thursday, whatever's in my pocket account, they call it, that's all the money I have access to. So if I see, you know, if I want to go out and have a lobster dinner and spend all of it in one big shebang and get a nice bottle of wine, I do it. I'm like, screw that. I want this, you know what I mean? And then I know the next four days until Thursday rolls around, I don't have any money and I can't get any money. So it's like checks and balances. I'm going to buy these double RL pants. I'm going to have them for 10 years. I'm buying them, but then I got to live poor for the rest of the week. Mm. So it's, it's weird. Cause I'm like, I'm all like, I don't care about the value, you know, money is like, I just don't, I'm like, if I see something I want, I just want to get it. You know what I mean? I spent so much of my life not being able to do anything that there's also a certain amount of I just want things that I want and I, and I obsess over them. So now I'm like, all right, well, I'll just, what can I sacrifice to get it? You know what I mean? I'll sell these three cameras, then get this camera. I'll sell, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like that same kind of mentality that, you know, it's not like, well, I'm like, oh, I'm just going to go buy whatever I want, just put it on my credit card and let them deal with it. Like, I don't care. I should be making enough money to do this. You know what I mean? It's like, it. I don't know. Even Even some of my friends that are, I mean, multi, multi millionaires. They're not throwing money out the window. There's people that just ball. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like ball. And you're just like, ooh, 
I'm not thinking, only that, but like like you ever see Ballers uh, on HBO? It's like you not oh only yeah. are supporting yourself, but you're supporting your family, your friends, your second cousins. Oh uh, yeah, all over. Oh yeah, I, I mean that's that's you know it's, and and God bless them. You know what I mean? Like, would it be fun one day to just be like, yeah, I'm gonna do whatever I want with whomever I want, and just go? I think everyone would take that opportunity, even just to live it once. You know what I mean? And that's what kids follow. They see this, you know, going to the clubs in New York. You see tables and people just just going nuts with bottles that you know you can't afford. You know, so if you're standing there like, yes, I'm at this table now. You're like, it's there. They go home like, yo, did you see us last night over at Puffy's table, dog? You know, <laughs> dang, dude. But then you're back to reality where you can't get in the next time. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like a, I don't know. It's like the photographer that took all these homeless people, took a picture of them homeless, and then had them cleaned up, shaved, uh, yeah. styled, and revamped them for an article. But then just let them go back on the street. Here's a hundred bucks. Thanks for doing it. And it's like, ah, is that really fair? Mm-hmm. You know, it's sad. It's sad. What an interesting thing. But is to me, I was like, it's just a reminder that they were once normal, beautiful people, that something went wrong horribly, and now they're going to, you know, they're living on the street, and th- this is their life. And to me, it's like, oof, I don't know how I felt about it, even though it was done very well, and then, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so it's also like, you know, if I had the choice, if someone said, you know, for, for 10 years... You can spend as much as you want and do anything you want. After that 10th year day after, you're back to nothing. Or if they said, or we'll give you, you know, $500 a week for the rest of your life. I would take the $500 a week. No question asked. You know what I mean? Because when you have stability, which is another thing about this industry that's not exciting, is that stability, you know. I know what I can do and what I can't do ups and downs people can live outside their means and you can live outside your means probably for 10 years sometimes and then when it drops off it's like you're really going back to nothing so for me it's like that constant reminder that in my business that happens every day is scary um i don't sleep at night you know especially i have a family now you know but i think that also keeps me going and it keeps me humble enough to where I do not think that I'm at a level where I don't do certain jobs and I should be doing all these even though I'm doing all them. You know, it's like when you're on the king's court, you don't go hang out with poor people because you're just at a level where like that's that's below us, darling. You know, like to me, I'm like, no, it's not. Well, that's such Half a, the hot yeah. chicks are poor. <laughs> if I'm in the king's jester's yeah. court, I'm like, well, I'm gonna, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm going to go where my heart tells me to go. That's I such never, a great, I never would have made it in those days. Cause I would have been like, no way, dude, I'm going down to the pub with a baguette and drink as much beer as I can with these dudes that are playing music in a sawdust floor, you know, living life, not figuring out what salad fork to eat. You know what I mean? Although I would have loved great wine and food and you know what I mean? So it's like, I love, I, I, I try, try to love the lifestyle that everyone leads. And yeah. sometimes a lot of times, especially when we travel, my assistants and I will all head out. We'll try to find local places, local bars, find an old man that's sitting there that you just can have a great conversation with and talk to. Then the next day, go to the dinner with The Rock. And it's, it's, it's the same, just different. But I sign, you know, I'm on the same conversation. I want the same kind of thing. But in each, you know, that's the interesting thing about I get what I get to do is I get to have a brief, you know, encounter with someone's life even if it's for a shoot and you get to know them in six hours and you really, when you're getting intimate and shooting and all that, it's, it's crazy how sometimes you leave and you feel like you're friends with that person now because you've had such a, an intimate thing. And, and that's what a great thing also, because I love that. Like I could see myself being a documentary filmmaker if I, if I didn't do this, you know what I mean? Like you said, traveling the world and talking to people like what a great job. Mm-hmm. You know what? I would dig that. And I want to go to like, you know, the, I'd go to the craziest, you know what I mean? Like I want to, I want to get into it. I don't want to sit, you know what I mean? Like I want to go uh, in the field and I want to, you know, 
I want to do things that emo evoke emotion and and things that that make me get goosebumps and chill my bones and like wow. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that that's exciting and I kind of get that through photography a little bit, but it's just a package <laughs> getting <laughs> delivered. No, it's all right. No worries. Nice package. I don't think let me just double oh, check spectrum. real quick. genius oh you like By that <laughs> well now that that's there we could talk about that um that's this is like one of my crazy goals is because it's the ground up show and i was like who the hell has like the, the best ground up story of all time uh it's dwayne the rock johnson so it's been something uh, like a fun challenge that i've been uh trying to uh ha like hatch with my guests is to figure out uh, how to get The Rock on Matt's podcast. There's a website. It's called gettherockonmattspodcast.com. Um, haven't been successful. Haven't gotten any return phone calls. You're the first person that's actually like met him and worked with The Rock. As you know, he's like the busiest person on the planet. Uh, if you were to give me advice on how to do that, what do you think I would have to do? I mean, listen, he does stuff. Con if he's not working and doing a movie and even in the movie and working in between breaks that he should be resting or going over lines. He's doing something with children. He's doing, you know, like making people's dreams come true. It's like literally just like me, you just have to wait for your opportunity and keep reminding him you're out there. Mm -hmm. Like a website, Instagram, hit him up on Instagram, tag him and, and you know, a bunch of stuff. He'll see it one day and then he'll tell his people, Yeah, you know, cause I really believe that this is the honest to God truth. He has a list that's longer than Santa's of let's make this happen. And I don't think he says no to anything. So the list just keeps getting longer <laughs> yeah. and he's chopping it down. Yeah. Whether in his lifetime he could do it or not, I think that he would definitely try to fulfill that. Yeah. I just think that out of anybody, and this is the image that you, you see of him, is that he just like, he really does give back and he really does care. Um, I don't expect anything. I, I kind of... There's like a, a weird, maybe I'm just uh, delusional at this point, but I'm like, it's going to happen. No. I have to, you have to believe that you it's going to happen. Believe, listen, that's yeah. absolutely 100% you have to believe it. Yeah. And, and wish it to come true. Do you know what I mean? Because there'll be chances, you know, or, or things where you meet, like I'll tell them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and stuff, you know, where it's like, oh, that might be the catalyst. Yeah. So that's why I say Just every little job, angles. you don't know what little thing that you do is going to make a big difference in your life. But if you do it out of your heart and you keep, you know, wishing those things and, and helping someone, you might, I might shoot someone that is like, I want to be a big art director one day. And, you know, you know, and they're like, you know, do, do, you know, when you do something with them and you give them your heart and you make sure they're not going to forget that. And when they, all of a sudden, 10 years later, are the biggest art director in the world and remembers you, and now they're hiring you. Who knew? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Who knew? So you always got to you know, be on your toes, and you got to treat everyone with respect. And, and, and it doesn't matter if it's not the biggest thing in the world you're going to do and you're not excited about it. It's, it's called work. Do you know what I mean? We all have to work. Do you know what I mean? So it, it, you just got to keep that mentality. And it's look at that's how I became a photographer, you know what I mean? And then I met her Brits, and then I did this, and it, you know. But it was all the belief in that, you know, in my heart I knew I wanted it, you know. And they always say if you do, if you put your mind to it, and you work hard enough, it'll happen. It's so cliche and true, but even he'll, you know, he'll say it, you know. It's, it's a lot of, it, most of the most successful people in the world didn't start out glamorous. Apple, you know, it's like Steve Jobs, you know, it's like he's in his garage, literally. Come on, like, and now he's Apple. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, it's, you don't know what the future is. You can't predict it, right? You can control all the elements that will get you to it. Do you know what I mean? But you really have to, to believe in yourself. And you really have to, I believe the universe is alive and, and, and is inside every person. I really, really, really strongly believe that. I'm not trying to get weird or this and that, but I, I agree. I, I know for a fact when I was six, seven years old, sitting in, staring out my window, just thinking like, what, is this it? This is life? This sucks. Screw this. 
Do you know what I mean? There was nothing, life had nothing to offer me. Life was just sad all the time. You know what I mean? I dreamed of better days. And I sit back now and I still, I remember those conversations, having them in my head, looking out the window. And every time that something good happens in my life, I remember that and just almost going, man, if, if I knew then what I know now, and you, cause you could have never told that six year old boy, you're going to be fine. You're actually going to live in the country with, with animals and you're going to have this beautiful wife and you're going to have children. And you, I would have been like, you're on crack and you can get it down the street, which is probably where you got it. So no, I don't see that. How am I going to get out of here? Mm. And it's like, it happens, you know, it is, but that belief that I never let go of. And, and, and the fact that once something good happened when I was a kid and I was like that, I was addicted to that. Wow. Maybe it is going to happen. You know what I mean? Because I became a gymnast that way. You know what I mean? Because I was, you know, just getting in trouble, staying after school and I became good at something and people were like, man, dude, you're sick. And then I was like, I was the first one in the ghetto that could do a runoff back answering back flip on the street and people would go nuts. Do you know what I mean? So I had like a gift where like if I wanted to impress someone, I would just stand there and do a backflip. And people were like, what the? <laughs> do that again. Do that again. You know, it was like, that was just like, man, damn, that made me cool. I realized that if you, if you do something, you know what I mean? You can and impress people. Like I saw my whole child, like, how can I impress people? What can I do? You know what I mean? Well, it's telling a joke or, you know, being good at something or helping them with something. You know what I mean? I was addicted to praise. Because you never got it as a kid. And once I started getting it and, got, you know, felt affection and knew, oh, this is what love is. This is what affection is. This is, this is awesome. Or usually when you're a baby, you start learning that from your mother. You know what I mean? You start learning these things as you're innately growing up. You get this affection and love and you know who is giving it to you. It took me a long time to, to understand what that meant. Because I'm like, yep, yeah, I, don't, I don't get it. You know what I mean? And it's like, it's hard to explain to someone when it's so in you. You know what I mean? But mm. when you don't have it, like I can understand when people say I'm, my heart and soul feels empty. I'm like, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. No, you don't. I'm like, I do. Trust me. I can't explain it to you. I can't teach it just like you can't explain it to me. But look me in my eye and I will tell you, I know what you mean. So, you know what I mean? Now I can start helping you. And, and, and it, it, you know, and try to give you advice that helped me take it or leave it. And it's going to stick with you or it's not, but at least I know I can offer it. Mm. You know what I mean? So that's what he does. I think too. Yeah, he really does. He yeah. does. Yeah. He's, I and mean, he, you, you, you don't have to be a fan of his to respect him and go, the dude is, the dude is a superhero. He really is. And he just looked like one, but he's like literally one of the sweetest you know, most kindest hearted humans I've ever met that can crush you. <laughs> yeah, you really can. That's the thing is like, I, like you said, you just look at what he does. He's the kind of person where you'd be like, well, he made it. He's done. He's and made what it. does he do every day? He wakes he's, up at 4 a.m. and totally. busts his ass. Yeah. He's not stopping. Yeah. Not stopping. And he's not like, a yes, you know, it's like, DJ, here's what we're going to do. So I'm going to get you on this rock, this and that, and the way it's going to come, and you you know, give me this big smile, and hold, like you're holding the world. He's like, no, we're not. <laughs> what else you got? You know what I mean? He's smart. Yeah. He's like, I'm not getting to that rock. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I get it, the rock and the world. He's like, I'm not into it. What else you got? Let's do something else. You know what I mean? So he's like, okay, um, what if you just, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, so he's, he's great about it. He's, yeah, I love that. Let's do that. You know what I mean? He's 100%. Like he wants, he's like, look, if we're going to do something, let's make it count. And that's why it's like every time I worked with him, every time I do something with him, it's like, I know it's going to be amazing and great. And I know he's going to help me make that because he wants me to succeed. He literally is like, you know, if he hires me for a job or pushes for me, he knows I want Brian to have this opportunity. I know he can do it. It's going to be great. And, and we're all going to get the benefits of it. That's the way he thinks. And, and you know what I mean? And it's like, man, thank you. Mm. And, and I get you, man. Dang. Thank you so much. You know what I mean? And he's great like that. But he's, he's always thinking about you 
when he does something. And I imagine as a director, that must be great because he's really just like, how can I make you shine? How can I do, you know, which is, you know, what would make an amazing actor. Do you know what I mean? Which is, you know, I love him. I think I, you know, his movies, I, people, you know, you're friends with him now. So you're cool. And I'm like, no, yeah, that's right. I am friends with him for a reason. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I love that dude and I respect and admire everything he does. And he's a huge inspiration. And I go on his, you know, that's one person on Instagram that I search the rock. What did he do today? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Interested. Otherwise I'll scroll through like everything else. Yeah, he's the only person I follow on Twitter right now. So <laughs> I see everything he does all the time. And I'm like, shit, man. Like, especially now because he's releasing Jumanji and it's just crazy madness every yeah. day. He just got the the Hollywood star. Yeah. Um, he believes in himself and he believes in what he does. And he that's why he promotes it like he does, which I'm like, that's great. Yeah. That's not shameless self-promotion. That's like, go see what I've done. Go check out this movie with these great people. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's great. You could you can't be any more humble than he no. is. You no. can't. No. For how how much that he's achieved and how much people idolize him uh and to still take the time and to to have this kind of outlook and on to be, life. And to be genuine about it. Yeah. It, it's like that's the thing. There's not he's not acting. You can't you like, couldn't you do it for that long. You can you you, you, you can act but you can't act like you care. Yeah. Someone knows. Someone who knows you will know. You know what I mean? And you can't save the world. You can't do everything. And I think he's a great balance of all of it together. What can I do? Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, be like The Rock. Yeah. If the world was like that, I don't know. That's like the perfect world, I guess. Yeah. We wouldn't want it. He'd be like, there's, <laughs> it's too good. Mm, yeah. I'm moving to Mars. Yeah. Uh, all right. You want to get to quick questions and then we can okay. wreck this podcast up. Quick questions. Not, uh, you know, not necessarily quick answers, so you can kind of expand on it if you want. Um, let's see here. Do you read much? No. These days? Has there been a book that, that's inspired you or maybe a movie or a documentary? Um, Something that's- I, don't, I don't read much, you know, unfortunately. I probably should read a lot. Um, my favorite book is um, Helmut Noon's autobiography. That's the only thing I've ever read twice. Um, movies, I, a favorite movie is not something I could say. It's like, what's your favorite food or your favorite color? It's like, my life is filled with every single, excuse me, every single one of them. I love movies. That's why I'm so grateful to work with celebrities. I've always wanted to do that since I started photography. Is I, cause I respect and admire them so much that I want to be able to shoot someone that, that I, you know, want to, that I idolize and that I'm like, wow, I I still go home and go, I just can't believe I just shot Scorsese. You know what I mean? Or I can't believe I just shot, you know, Billy Bob Thornton. You know, I've watched him so much and he's what a great, great actor. And to be able to be in the same room with him is, is you know, everyone's dream that, that is fans of someone. So I, I try to go to the movies as much as possible. And I don't listen to what critics or you know, and anyone says, I go to the movies that I am interested in or the people that are in them. I go because they're in them. I don't, sometimes I know nothing about them. You know, I just went and saw Lady Bird and I was blown away. And, and someone, you know, just said, oh, that movie's great. Saw the trailer and I went, I was like, I'm so happy I went to see that. And I'm addicted to popcorn. Oh, oh man, it's, you I, can't not do no, it. No, I don't understand how people can't get snacks or popcorn when they go to a movie. It makes me... You know, it makes me crazy. My girlfriend's just like, just juicing that butter. Because in Australia, uh, they don't do the butter yeah. like we do it. <laughs> and, and I don't like the fake butter, but the Angelica yeah. Theater in New York is like one of my favorite theaters. And I used to go in there and literally just buy popcorn and leave. Yeah. Like, I'm just going to grab some popcorn and go out. The guy looked good. That's hilarious. And I'm like, great. Walking on the streets in New York with popcorn. Just yeah. The best, though. And they use real butter. It's great. But um, so I don't really have a favorite. Yeah. Um, what what have you learned? Like you were saying, you've worked with like all these public personalities. What have you learned about them as a people? That uh, I learned that they're on? not. When you don't see it, if you never get the chance to meet a big star or have, come face to face with them and listen to their voice come out of their mouth and have them look you in the eye, I don't think you can get a sense of how real that person is. When you look at someone that's like so beautiful. You know, you're like Julianne Moore and you're watching her in all these movies and she's such a big star in your, in your life. Do you know what I mean? You just know what you see or hear on TV. You don't know 
who that person really is. You know what I mean? They could be very serious. You know, hi, nice to meet you. Oh, thank you very much. Well, well, I'm, you know, I'm glad to hear that. And thank you. It was really nice meeting you. You know, or like, hi, you know, wow, my God. Oh, that's so sweet. How do you, you know, are they different? You know, and the fact that, no, they both showed the respect and they both took time enough to look you at and shake your hand. Sometimes you're like, you know, you, you, certain people blow your mind. Like, so sweet, like, like, like The Rock. Like you hear stories, you know, he obviously is very, you know, outspoken on Instagram and Twitter and all that stuff. So you almost feel like you know him. You know what I mean? But there's a difference when you're looking right in his face and he does it. You feel things. Like I, I, I've got to see people or feel them or touch their hand or something that I get this, you know, their aura seeps into my body. I can, I can look at someone and know if they're evil by looking at them. And talking with them. Not necessarily if I saw them in a film or I'm talking mm. regular people too. Like I'll meet someone and in two seconds I'll know we'll never be friends. Mm-hmm. And something that, you know, it's a gift that I have and I'll go that far as to say it's a talent. Do you know what I mean? I really am great at reading people. Well, that's got to be such a big part of what you do. And, and just like the, the communication and working with people and, and uh, building uh, comfort with yeah. somebody well, it's also you know you got to remember too you're not there to be friends with them sometimes it ends up that you know you have a lot in common and you can start conversations sometimes it's like you know we've got to get this all done in a half hour let's get straight to business nice to meet you let's go i'm like great boom 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 thank you very much see you later not not that he's like you know that's not being a dick that's being professional mm-hmm. that's being like yeah now he's got six other you know six other shoots that day at a just, you know, press junket. I'd want to be that way too. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then you might see him in a bar six months later. Hey man. Hey, thanks man. That was, that was great meeting you that day. You know, like cool. Or they're just, you know, something business. And you know, you gotta remember you're not, I'm not in this business to make friends with celebrities. Although it's still great to, to have that moment, man, I worked with him. That's an accomplishment. That's great. And I got a great photo of him that I can sit back and look. My portfolio is basically my Bible or my diary that, you know, I sit back and look at it and just go, man, look what I've accomplished. This is amazing. And I have it here in front of me. You know, when I first did my first coffee table book, I was like, this is everything. This is insane. Do you know what I mean? I was practically giving them away. Anyone that would want one, <laughs> take it. Don't worry about it. I got this. I want people to have that. You know, and just that was one of the big goals of my life. And I made it happen more than once. So it's great. Uh, Let's see here. Can you tell that I have severe ADD? I just keep going off on tangents. No, do you like legit? Oh, we're like, (laughs) how'd you get started? Well, um, when I went to this store one time and they had this great chicken. Yeah. Oh, so there was I love it. This is, that's my favorite conver- kind of conversations, though. Yeah. Is uh, I just had Alexis Wilkinson from. She's a writer, or <coughs> was a writer for Veep and Brooklyn Nine Nine. But uh-huh. like just off the rails. Yeah. Like everything about the conversation, it was going yeah. like ninety miles an hour. And I'm like, you know, like I like to have a resemblance of a story here, or at least Good. kind of have some bits and pieces that uh, can help. I people. could just see people at home going, "He never answered the question." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's actually the best advice I ever got uh, was from my friend Josh, who's in a uh, documentary, Minimalism, that we made. And he said, I was doing like a BBC Which, interview. by the way, loved. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Loved. I, uh, I was, So like, when we put it out there, I had never really done any media or anything. I had like a little bit in, in high school. Actually, this is like a long, I'm not going to get into the whole story, but I made a parody rap video like when YouTube just came out, 2006, and I got sued, my brother and I did, for $7 million from the grocery store AMP, also known as Superfresh. Uh, it was like kind of my first. Come on. Yeah, it was fucking nuts. It was, uh, I've, I think I've talked about it once or twice on the podcast. That is awesome. Yeah, it, w- it was like the best way to start out and to be like, all right, this is, it, it felt like that was going to be my life forever. It's like, I'm literally leaving my dorm room and I got reporters with cameras in my face. I'm like, holy shit. At the same time, I couldn't really enjoy it because it was so stressful because we were getting sued for $7 million. Yeah. Um, um, maybe just a bit. Yeah, just a little bit. So yeah, it was like a parody rap video, super corny and over the top, but uh, it was funny. We ended up being on like CNN and American Morning, live yeah. television, all that stuff. It was, this was such a trip. But then I was preparing for this BBC interview, and I'm like, what do I, how do I approach it? <laughs> like, I've done this before, like, but. <laughs> Googling, I like, can't say that, can't say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. 
And uh, Josh told me, he's like, so if you're gonna go into an interview like that where you've only got five minutes or so, and, and you know, maybe it's to promote a movie, maybe it's to promote whatever, maybe have like three points that you wanna get across. And no matter what they ask, this is like what politicians yeah. do, no matter what they ask, yeah, like, just exactly. go back to those three points. Exactly, Yeah. exactly. Genius. Like, so what's your favorite food? Well, when I got started, <laughs> yeah. I um, we didn't have start. I learned how to <laughs> use even. the cameras. Oh, okay. Yeah, but nobody usually because unless you're a politician, unless it's like Anderson Cooper and it's like really uh, they're a hard pressing interview where they're trying to get the truth out or trying to make somebody stumble. For the most part, people are just like, let's just chat. Like whatever you yeah, want to yeah. talk about, like let's go there. Yeah, I mean, like if you're on a date and you ask someone a question and all they did was answer it, it'd be like Jesus. Yeah. Oh my like, god, that'd be so, so boring. So what right? do you like to do? Yeah, I, I like going to the park. Yeah. And um, dogs, I like dogs. Okay. Just uh, a then you almost feel like you're interviewing, about. or it's like, ah, oh, one time I, then to getting the story, I guess it makes it more interesting. And then you really get to know the person. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Maybe I'm smarter than I think. I think you are. Yeah. I don't think you give yourself this. enough credit. Uh, but uh, all right. So let's just do two more questions uh, and then we can wrap up. So, one thing to read, watch, or listen to. Uh, before the listeners go to bed tonight, what would you recommend? What's going to inspire them? Read, watch, listen, or do? One thing, yeah. Read, Do watch, wasn't there, but you could do, do you listen. could throw in there as well. Oh. If there's a good do. So I added that. Yeah. Um, I think, listen. Listen to, you know, listen to what, the universe is, is tr where they're trying to guide you. Listen to people around you. Listen for what you don't want to do more than what you do want to do. Mm. Listen for how do I prevent making mistakes, whether it's in my relationship, in my life, in what I'm going to have for breakfast. You know what I mean? Like I found that if I look at things that could possibly go wrong, I can prevent them and help myself do more positive things in life. And if, you know, if you don't have a lot or you're struggling and this and that, try to do something that makes you feel good. Like I'm doing, we're doing a toy drive Friday. And I'm like, to my, I'm like, you guys can bring one toy and come and you watch how good you feel. And just, just do it though. Promise me you'll just do it. You know what I mean? And there's some, there's some things. And here's what I say too: is like you can go up to a total stranger, and just say hello, really, really, you know, extrovertedly, and maybe give someone a hug. You know, it's like you look like you needed a hug. Do you mind if I give you a hug? You'd be surprised how much that that might stick with someone and go, wow, that was cool. That didn't cost any money. And all that cost was you having the balls to do it and picking the right person. You know what I mean? Because I'll do that a lot. You know, I did it last week in New York. There was this cool, you know, we were at this thing and this waitress, I'm like, do you mind if I give you a hug? She goes, yeah, kind of I do. <laughs> and I was like, cool. But I just wanted you to know that I wanted to because I think you're cool. The offer's out there. Yeah. Yeah. You Josh and I mean? like, from the dog, they literally hug everybody they meet. No, I know. Not everybody says uh, yes. No, no I, I'm but, a hugger too. I remember yeah. them saying that. Sorry, we're yeah. huggers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and it's, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And there's an appropriate way to do it. And it's like, and when you ask, mm -hmm. someone could say, no, I'm not, oh, I don't like to be touched. Okay, cool. You know, letting them know that you want it. It's like, it's just those little things that even when I watch it, I was like, man, that's just, that's so me. Mm -hmm. You know, I still, I do that all the time. I'm like, oh, hug, you know, and, and then a lot of people are like, oh, I love hug. Oh, that was yeah. great. You know what I mean? It's like nothing wrong with it or, or just to, you know, being able to find out what, what, how, you know, I think that life is so negative these days and there's so much stress about the news and, and, and everything. And I'm like, I'm not going to talk politics or, you know, or religion or anything like that. But I know one thing that is universal is treating people with respect and everyone in life whether you're poor, rich, sad, happy, just trying to make the world a better place and what you can do to do it, if you can summon the strength to at least try once a day to do something nice, you know, and listen to other people and trust other people and do it, I think the world would be a better place. You know what I mean? Does that sound stupid? I don't give a shit. But I literally, you know, sometimes I'll try to just do that. And I'll, I'll, I'll think about it too. And like, and I'll think about what did that, I wonder what that person just thought of what I said or did. I wonder if they got it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And sometimes you can tell, like I made that person's day 
And when I, when I know I did that, it just makes me feel so damn good. You know what I mean? Because people are dicks. They're never going to change. They're always going to be a dick. And they're going to die a dick. You know what I mean? And fuck them. To be honest, fine, I'll move on. Because there's a lot of people in the world. There's a lot of, you know, people that will understand me or don't. If I can make everyone understand me, I'd fucking run for president. Do you know what I mean? Because that's the key, isn't it? Mm. So. At least half the people. It'll work. <laughs> but even if you're 20% on something like that, you're doing something good. Yeah. 10%. That's awesome. Great, man. Um, if people want to check out your work or connect with you online, where should we send them? Um, at Brian Bowen Smith on Instagram is kind of like my key go-to. I'm not a big Facebook guy. Um, Twitter got too complicated. So I really just run it through Instagram. And then I have an agency, Copious Management. Dot, uh, I think it's copiousmanagement.com. Um, then just click on my name and you'll find all my current work. And they also have um, Copious Management on Instagram. Um, they're really good at posting all my new work. Mm. And I'll, use, I'll usually retreat from them or repost on Instagram. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, but I'm literally like, follow me on Instagram and you'll, you'll get a good dose of who I am and what I do. Cool, man. Thanks for doing this. Hey, thank you, man. Appreciate it's it. It's an honor. Yeah, this was fun. All right. Brian Bowen Smith is a legendary photographer. Photographer. How do you say photographer? Photographer. Photo- photographer. Photographer. Photo- photographer. 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 Right? If you say it quick, it's photographer. Photographer. <clears throat> Brian Bowen Smith is a legendary photographer. <laughs> God damn it. It's so hard. How do you say that word? I'm not going to be able to do it now. Brian Bowen Smith is a legend. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, I got it. <laughs> Brian, Bo- <laughs> Brian Bowen Smith is a legendary photographer known for his celebrity portraits. Killed it. Nailed it.